they say, don't touch my Social Security, don't touch my Medicare. And on the other hand, they say, don't raise my taxes. Well, if you follow those two dictates, you end up with so much red ink that you threaten uh, another economic crisis that could make the last one look like child's play. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at the issues behind the news. This week, budgeting for a more fiscally sound America. Gloomy to grim. That's how many financial experts paint the nation's economic future, as tax cuts, entitlement spending, high unemployment, and the expanding deficit all shape the debate. Senior fellow Isabel Sawhill says, the solution is easy in principle, but will mean making some hard choices. I think right now um, we should focus on the deficit. Um, I think everybody knows that our deficits are very large right now, about $1.3 trillion a year. Um, but that's not the real problem. The long-term picture here, even the medium-term picture, uh, is really very bad. Uh, we have a mountain of red ink in our future and uh, no solution to it. You say permanently extending the Bush tax cuts would be unforgivable, but allowing them to expire during this economic crisis is unwise. Explain that. Extending the Bush tax cuts uh, is totally unaffordable. And uh, it's unaffordable because as we look out, we have very large uh, deficits in our future, uh, about a $15 trillion cumulative um, hole over the next 10 years. In other words, we're going to be adding $15 trillion to our national debt. Uh, that is not sustainable, and those tax cuts alone uh, would contribute three to four trillion dollars of that amount. So we should extend them temporarily because we are in a recession um, or still recovering from one. But we should not extend them permanently, in my view, for anyone. The big issue here is entitlement spending, Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. What's to be done about these programs? They are um, the largest part of the budget. Right now, they absorb uh, about 70% of all the revenues that we take in. Uh, so if we don't do something about uh, spending on those three big programs, we're not going to make much progress on the spending front. We have a job to do in terms of educating the public that that's where the money is, and if they don't want their taxes raised a lot, uh, they're going to need to accept some reforms in these entitlement programs. The president's health care plan, should we keep it or scrap it? We struggled mightily to reform health care um, this past year, and I am happy that there is now much greater access uh, to health care, that we have gone to a universal or almost universal system. Uh, but that's the good news. The bad news is that I don't think we've done very much to restrain health care costs. There's no reason why we couldn't move to the idea that everybody should have access to insurance and if you have a lower income, the government should help you to buy that insurance policy. But it shouldn't be uh, an insurance policy that enables you to have, you know, the sky is the limit. Uh, it's an insurance policy that would cover, hopefully, just the things that we know are effective and the most important. Bell, you've written that if current trends persist, the weight is going to fall really on poor the poor and middle classes. The extent to which we want to use our limited resources to um, continue to provide uh, you know, reasonably generous benefits to older Americans in the form of Social Security and Medicare, including older Americans who are uh, like Bill Gates in the top of the income distribution, uh, versus spending more on uh, things like education and infrastructure uh, that can make the economy more productive over the longer run. And I think if we neglect those investments in working age families and in the education of children, 
uh, we will in the long run be a weaker nation and that's not what we should want. If we do make those investments, then um, younger people will be more productive and they will be able to earn more and pay more uh, in taxes and that will help eventually to support uh, a, a retired population. Well, economists seem to agree, Bell, that there's one answer. We raise taxes and cut spending. I think everyone should be concerned about the need to take action now uh, to restrain uh, spending and raise revenues. Everything has to be on the table. You can't do it just with revenues or just with spending. Uh, and if we took action now but phased it in gradually as the economy recovered, we would reassure financial markets and reassure the American public that we know how to keep our fiscal house in order. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts, all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, or iPhone, go to brookings.edu mobile.